that's not on. That, that has been working here? very well, yeah. Testing. Check one, two, one, two. Now we have to um, mic Sasha. Check one, two, one, well, two, one, two, we're two, just, two, uh, two, 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 two. Cleaning up our tech here. Do the lav if you can. Okay. We're going to introduce ourselves in just two seconds here. Okay, let's see how this works out. So, um, I'm Gene Malika. Hi, I'm Sasha Thomas. <laughs> and we have, uh, we have Gene Malika Studio, and we have GS Photography uh, that we site. also have, and that's a stock site, and that's our photography service. So, we have a branding company, Gene Malika Studio, and we have photography. So, today we're gonna do a quick demo on how we set up our shoots and why we do what we do, and probably a lot of you in this room are compositors yourself, or you've created some covers, or you work with designers who are creating covers, and maybe you've got some questions as to whether or not to use stock, or what the benefits are of using custom photography, or a mix of that. Yeah. So, Any photographers in here today? Any photographers? Okay, great. So we're gonna be shooting with uh, a Mamiya, uh, medium-sized format. We use this because in the nature of our business, we like a lot of flexibility with lights and shadows. We typically bring shadows into the shots for mood. This gives us high dynamic range. That's incredible. We also have a mark, a uh, Canon mark, but this is our go-to. Um, and then we've got Pro Photo Mono Lights. We usually have four in our, in our studio, but today we've got three. Is it off? Or is it just a... Uh, so yeah, we're gonna... We've got a, a model with us that we've been shooting with for a long time. She's a dear friend. This is Devin. Devin, come on up, Devin. <laughs> and she's a great collaborator. So, um, yeah. Sasha usually does all the hair and makeup and photography. I do a lot of photography and compositing. We both design the covers together. So yeah, we're gonna move into this. All right, so um, off this camera. And let's mm -hmm. talk about the lighting. Um, let me do one thing. So, well, we've got just a three-point light system. We're gonna have a fill here. We're using a deep octa, which is fabulous. I mean, most of the tools we use have silver, silver liners, just because we want as much reflection and, and contrast as we can get. And then we've just got two simple rim lights. We brought other soft boxes. I'm not sure we'll get to them, because um, they're a little time-consuming to set up, but that's how we're gonna run this. So, Devin, step on in here. And step there for a minute. Just stay there for a sec. And then we'll just shoot you at that. And some of these lightings, the light is going to go right past her. Yeah. What's up? Fall asleep? No, oh, hold on. Let me move it. It just fell asleep. Yeah. So we're capturing into Capture One, which is a fantastic capture software, which I would totally recommend. Um, far superior to Photoshop's RAW. It's dark. It's, um, yeah. Dark in here. It is. So the camera's having a little trouble. This, this lighting's a little odd, but we're getting a great capture already. And then, uh, so let's say we're shooting a cover and we want a, a moonlit setup or a sense of moonlight. We'll just uh, stay there, bring in a little bit more rim light. Don't shoot it yet. <laughs> okay, go for it. We like to get at least one with one yeah, one yeah. in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've got a nice rim right there. So if you're compositing this shot, you've already got this great light, you know, to work with. You may not even have to paint that in. 
It's already there. I mean, it's all about saving yourself time and energy and also getting a fantastic result. That looks pretty darn good. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask as we go. Don't use them. <laughs> so the question was, uh, what, what, any advice on models who have never shot before? OK, they're not a model if they've never shot before. If they want to start modeling, use them as a test. If it works out, great, terrific. But you know, we run into this all the time, too. Devin's a professional model. Uh, she was with Wilhelmina in New York. That's how we met. We met 15 years ago. Um, to save ourselves an anxiety and our client, we usually use modeling agencies for two reasons. One, we get the rights and usage straight. It's contractual. And they're also professional. So it, it matters on a couple of levels. One, size. And it, of course, you can get any size you want. But the size is usually, whether it's a 12 or a 2 or a 4 or a 6, it's going to look great. Um, it's something that the agencies are really good about figuring out. So we don't have to. Because we do shoot all sizes. Um, and, if, and if you do use a modeling agency, make sure you get the, um, they call it the fitness board. So a fitness board is you have models that like to, they're more comfortable moving. Um, because the fashion models or the beauty models, they're used to just posing like this, standing very, very still, or like walking the runway. But um, it's definitely better to have someone yeah. from the, the fitness board. Because right, we've uh, we've Definitely actually be more movement, and we've had yeah. a lot of models come in um, where we need them to do martial arts or um, right, yeah, or martial arts. Yes, a lot of props, a lot of swords. Sword. Um, you know, it's really good to ask if they're comfortable with weapons. Are they comfortable holding a gun? It's a fake gun, but are they comfortable holding it? Um, are they comfortable with swords? Do they? Need <laughs> We had yeah. someone come it's a good point. Who was a, it really a is. a former um, Olympian archer, and we actually needed it was for Ella Summers' project, yeah. and we needed her to hold a bow and arrow. And she was like, "Well, I was on the yeah. <laughs> Olympic archery team. We're like, that's a score." Yeah, I mean, professional talent. You know, it, you know, we've run into this so many times where you bring a professional in, and they might do some acting. They're doing a lot of modeling. I mean, we prefer models over actors. Um, but they'll have this background. They'll do horseback riding. They'll do fencing. We've had. We did. We had a commission where we needed a, somebody who had a, a, you know, um, you know, what kind of, uh, it was Jeff Pantanello's series. And so we needed somebody who could have kicks. Lar you know, theoretically, we, were, we didn't expect to actually hire a model who, who knew martial arts. We just wanted somebody who looked like it. But this guy came in and he was actually Which able to do everything. He, he was up in the air. He's like, no problem. Yeah. He jumped up into the air and we have him, like, actually it's on one of the posters. Did you bring that? It is. It is. Um, so I think that point is, is that you, you're, you're collaborating with professional talent. They're going to bring more to the process. Absolutely. So go for that. Go for If you can't afford it, do it. OK, so most modeling agencies have an hourly rate of 150 for their talent, and then they charge a commission per hour, about 20%. So you're like looking at 180. Now that's a fitness board. Fitness boards are swimsuit boards. So modeling agencies break it down, as Sasha was saying, to you know, runway, uh, fitness and athletics, wedding, yeah. lifestyle. Th there's a whole bunch. Um, and they're typically lower. They're, they run that. That's about the average. But you're going to have to probably a four hour minimum or more. So if we're shooting a series, and the author has maybe 10 books in a series, I would say that's a full day shoot for sure, maybe six hours of shooting. Yeah, along those lines, mm -hmm. uh, like you're saying, if you could put a round figure on it, how many hours for one cover for a book? Well, one cover could be uh, the actual photo time. Yeah. Could be 20 minutes. Okay. I mean, it's like an hour to set it up. It's probably if it's a female and you're having professional hair and makeup, that's going to take an hour. So the actual shoot time. It could be very quick if you know exactly what you want. And again, assuming you're working with somebody who's really good, then you get it pretty quick. Um, so. But that would still be like four total hour charts. You couldn't care. 
Yeah, yeah. So if you have a female model come in, we typically always hire, well, Sasha is a professional hair and makeup artist herself, and so she does all of that. And she does a lot of wigs and special effects. And, and believe it or not, the difference between a fantastic model like Devin doing her makeup and Sasha doing it is, is a world of difference. We, we did not do professional makeup today uh, because we, that's a huge case and we already brought a lot of cases. But um, again, as you're creating a product, you, know, you wanna put the best foot forward in every single step. So just to say, professional hair and makeup definitely would be good. Should we mic? Okay, so no, let me no. answer the question. So, okay, what Sasha's gonna, oh, this one? you got it? But it's not picked, oh, you just have to speak very clearly. Okay. okay, because this costs money, you don't wanna waste your money or the model's time, what do you do ahead of time? What tips do you have as far as making sure you're completely ready to go so you're not flailing in terms of props or expectations yeah. and, and Absolutely. clothes, et cetera? So you're saying as the author, is that right? So what we do is we have a shot list and we send that to every author. Before we start, <coughs> it's um, weeks before because we wanna make sure that first of all, you choose your model. So let's say you contacted us and you say, I'm very interested in doing this shoot. We say, great, we talk it out. We send you a contract. From there, we then send um, model choices. So we'll get in touch with the agencies. We'll try and get as close to what you're looking for, whether it's hair color, but if you want someone who has blue hair, I'll get a wig um, and I'll create whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, if you, um, so then the shot list will go out to you and then you're gonna explain to us exactly what you're looking for uh, in the model. Then you're going to explain to us what each shot should be. What do you want your cover to look like? So you're gonna label everything for us. You're gonna give us all this information and say, right? Yeah, and we develop it with you. Yeah, so you would say, okay, um, book one is an outdoor scene. Um, it's raining, it's night, and you say, okay, great. So mm -hmm. is that like, are there stars in the sky? Like, we're, we're, then we light it. So when we shoot for that first book, that is our main focus is to set that lighting up, right? So that's why we always use gels. Yeah, we, we will gel our studio all up. So if we're creating a, a shot like this, we're gonna gel that, we're gonna light for that. If this is, this is gonna be a concept that, that came in, we discussed it. And then what happens is, the lighting that we're using, it then reflects onto the model. So then later on when we go back to do the cover, um, and we do the cover design on it, we don't have to add those shadows. We've already created those for this model is Jordan, for Jordan, and we now, we're getting all of this. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe we'll just pass it around if you want to take a look at yeah. any of these. Um, so let's say you, you have at least five books. Pass them around. We then will have you outline yeah. the five books and are. tell us what's going on. And then we ask you to tell us a little bit about Sorry, your story. Like sure, what's yeah. happening in that book. So then it's better for our model to really um, understand what, what they're doing, right? So we give mo uh, the model the same paper that you give us, like all the information that you're giving us, she then gets to read it and then she's, she gets into the, the character, right? So she wants to become that character for you. So if there's magic, when I said to her, let's do some of this magic, she's then going like this. Is the magic coming from the hand? Is the magic coming from the palm? Is it the finger? Uh, is there a sword, right? Like she, you know, how does she wield the sword? Sorry, how does she wield the sword? So uh, <laughs> I talk a lot with my hands. So um, it's really important for, for the author to get us all this information. Like you said, otherwise it's a waste of time. You're just trying to guess what it is, right? So Including costumes, <laughs> including costumes, wardrobe. Everything, everything. Water effects, smoke effects. Yeah. Well, we don't do a lot of smoke anymore, but we used to all the time. Yeah. 
Water, uh, we like to, you know, we have a huge fan. Yeah. We have the fan yeah, going a lot and of we fans. spray water. <laughs> so, I know, think maybe Devin's been sprayed with I th water. Basically, I think we feel like if we're going to give you, by analyzing, say, 10 ideas, you probably accidentally come up with 20. Right. I mean, you're going to wind up with so much material. So it's all about developing a lot of creative ideas and, and having all that to work with when we go to You end up with about, let's, about 800 shots. So <laughs> it's very difficult for you then because this is what's in your what's in your mind, what you've created, um, is now before you, right? So we want to get that as close as possible. And then you have the job of choosing, you know, one photo for that cover, right? And so more books you have, the better. Yeah, and you have to cobble from there. You're cobbling things from the same angles. And, and Miss, you have a question? One here. I can pass that mic around. So I, I write, I write uh, romance, and so in a series I would have different main characters for each one. And would you be able to accommodate that, or would I need to have like all the different models? We've done it. Yeah. We can do anything you want to invest right. in. Um, we've had plenty of authors come in. Carol Banata, you had two unique models on each of your covers, and you had what a book, a series of six, five. Okay, so we've done that many times um, and then you know in that case again we would discuss that in the creative brief we'd know exactly what you want to shoot with that concept here we go okay so if um if they're all different costumes would they like so each well, oh okay okay <laughs> okay in that we case <laughs> And not a lot Little of work up. on my end for the costuming, so that's totally fine. We, we actually do, um, we have them do push-ups before the shoot. Totally. So we have them really, oh, yeah. you know, get the veins going. That day we work them out. Oh yeah, I'm like, okay, let's get 10 push-ups. I wanna see some crunches. I wanna see some definition in there. And yeah. then, you know, and then we, we spray them with them. water. We work, <laughs> I mean, you gotta get your money's worth for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, any other questions right now? One sec, one sec. Yeah. All right. Turn that off, and I got to turn this off. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Software and the thing people just faster in the process or they use There's times when it's very convenient. Let's say you've done a shoot. Um, we, we, we use that on some of our shoots. But I think overall, the best effect and the most efficient is photography. I mean, and we've heard that uh, from our clients over and over. So, um, but to accommodate all of our clients, we will also have shooting so software to help us out yeah. when we need to. Yeah. 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 Anyone else? Let's get some more questions. You want to use mine? Here. Maybe you're on mute or something. I don't know. Here, take mine.
Can you uh, ask that question again? Here, let me step over to you, and then we'll mic you, and I'll answer. Would you use the same formula that you just described to us for book covers for branding or advertisement? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, yeah, that's the only way to do it. Uh, you know, I, I mean, probably uh, unlike a lot of advertising agencies out there, you know, um, we work very, very closely uh, with our clients. And, uh, you know, Sasha and I kind of represent a, a number of skills that usually in one photo shoot would, would represent three or four people. And so we have a lot of ability to kind of collaborate with our clients. And, and, and yeah, I would absolutely do it that way. Yeah, no doubt. There's no difference. Yeah. So you said earlier that one photo shoot may result in like 800 photos, but you only need to pick five. What happens to the remaining? And if they're still available, would you be able to use them, like say like three years down the road, you wanted to rebrand and do a different cover? Totally. Yeah, so uh, we wouldn't shoot 800 shots for one cover. So if you had just one cover, you'd get enough for one cover, one idea. We wouldn't overwhelm you like that. That'd be pointless. Maybe you'd get 100. I mean, we are a little excessive. Mm -hmm. But if you had one cover, you know, we might go as far as 75 to 100 shots. Um, but generally, we try to measure, let's say it's eight. We try to go in ranges of 75, maybe 50 to 75 per cover concept. I think the most we've done is maybe 12 concepts in a day. We try to keep it around 10. But uh, any the photos, when you contract with us, are yours. So they're not reused, and we and most and it, and we archive everything. We've got servers and we back everything up. So yeah, the material would be safe. It's not going to be used. If you, th it's non-transferable. It's all contractual. So you go through a contract with us, and we would discuss it. Uh, that's typically how it works. Yeah. I feel like Bill Donahue. In terms of like sourcing models, do you have just like a, a list of them or like, because I get really specific about like the look of a character because <laughs> it's so in your head, you know? Like yeah, totally. So that's another reason why it's good to use modeling agencies because we can source a lot fast. We go to like three or four agencies, so we get the best we can and hopefully, typically, it works out. Um, so that's kind of what we do. Yeah. And then we've also got a lot of people we've worked with. We, rec we make recommendations too, but yeah. Hair and makeup, wigs, special effects, all that stuff Sasha was mentioning, that we do a lot. We've had a lot of uh, you know, blonde talent we look for, let's say, just as an example, and they come in, and they dyed their hair, and they weren't honest with their portfolios. That's another reason why we use agencies. They're, those books should be up to date. Yeah. Yeah, we've had a hand. to get as close to um, the hair coloring that you're looking for because um, for cover designers um, some people have a harder time doing hair I'm sure we all have <laughs> had this experience um, and wigs are you know if it's not a good wig it would leave a a really harsh line so then they they try to like wisp that and then it ends up looking really soft and painted rather than looking like real hair. So you definitely want to try and get as close as you possibly can to the hair color, unless it's, like I was saying, if it's like purple, uh, something like that. And when you have, um, let's say, ears, let's say your, your main character is an, is an elf, and I've always put ears on, uh, and we've put claws on, I've, you know, we use a lot of uh, Hollywood dirt, and we use a lot of blood. <laughs> so <laughs> not real blood. Um, there's uh, fake blood that we use, it all comes off. Um, but we definitely, you have to add all of that because it's so much harder to add it later. So like we were saying for the photo shoots, when you do give us that shot list, we have all that information. Were they in a battle? Uh, you know, are they battling a werewolf? And th they, you know, we rip clothes, there's, there's rips in the clothes, uh, there's dirt on the clothes, there could be blood on the knuckles. You know, these are all things that you, you wanna give them every bit of detail that you can, right? Because then you're gonna get a much better Um, if you find a model when you're perusing stock that you love, what are the chances of actually tracking down that model? Um, so you say, 
found an image of a model. Where'd you find the stock? Um, I don't know. You know, okay, so likely they're not going to give you any information because they shouldn't. And we wouldn't either. Um, so I'd say, I don't know. I, I would say it's unlikely. I mean, go for it if you want. But they're not probably wanting to do that legally. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I would just keep looking. You know, whatever talent you get, you know, you want to make sure you contract that and get the rights sorted. And, uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, does anyone uh, have anything specific they would like Devin to do? Like, if you like this, like, <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, <laughs> oh, um, can you give like any tips as far as posing, like lying down or within, like, for your face, like how to like shield if you're doing like a fantasy sequence where someone is kind of like shielding from the light or from an attack? Let's do it. And we, we give them a lot of direction. It's really important to um, speak with the model, right? <laughs> we love Devin. Um, so, uh, and we like to give some direction. So all, all the things that you might do. You want to make sure that they're lying in the face like you're standing there. Like you're really looking at them. Like they don't see anything like that. I mean, we've got a pretty good rim on it now. Um, uh, Let's say the light's coming this way. And then you yeah. start. And then it's like, then we're going to, like, away from it. Does anyone want to um, do anything else from Devin? The more direction as a model we get from you authors, I mean, it makes like night and day difference. So it, it, I mean, like Sasha said too, it really helps us kind of like really try to be that character, whether I'm fierce or in a romance, you know, I've done kind of either, you know, I've played like a vampire, killer or you know I've done all sorts of spectrums so it's really important to as a model to have as much info as a, on the character as possible to really embody your vision you know Anyone want to uh, take a photo with Devin before we change her outfit? <laughs> <laughs> I see two hands. <laughs> There's a lot of romance authors in here, and so how do you, if they're the male counterpart or a female counterpart, how do you handle the chemistry of trying to create intimate scene? Lie. My first romance, I was like, okay, do I need to take a shot before this, or <laughs> how are we gonna do it? To be perfectly honest, but um, but no, it was it was fine. I mean, it's really casual, you know, when you're like walking in the set. The more opportunity, you know, that like Gene is great about giving me and if I have a male counterpart, like a little time just to kind of schmooze and get to know each other on just like a personal level. Right. Right, but it's not like, you know, the first time we talked is on set. So it really helps when we get there. We, you know, talk about just, you know, basic things, our lives a little bit. And then so we get on set, we're more comfortable with each other. But, I mean, I've dealt with shirtless men before, and it's, you know, not a bad gig. I don't hate it. <laughs> My husband probably doesn't love it, but I don't mind it. <laughs> Yeah. 
right. like they are. Yeah. And so, you know, where you, you're following a brief. And so it kind of makes it official that this has to happen. Yeah. And I mean, I've never had to like kiss somebody for, you know, for a cover, but it's, you know, you want the illusion that they're like, we're about to kiss or that your characters are about to kiss or that kind of too. So I've, I mean, we've gotten real close and we're trying to, you know, <laughs> do the. Yeah. Yeah, the and then we're like, wait, wait. Nearby the face, <laughs> but to, to create that illusion, <laughs> you know, but. Um. Or the camera's stuck. We have to change the battery. Hold that position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think photographers are great, too, where there was, like, w I had did have one male model that was just kind of a little, I don't want to say, he wasn't creepy, but he was just a little, no, not with, not with you guys. Nev with never. Never. But. It was just wasn't yeah. as comfortable. Yeah. We'll just say, and that and that photographer like picked up on it pretty quick too. So, um, which I know you guys would too. Like, luckily he'd I be out the door in a hot second. You know, yeah. with you guys yeah. by any means. But um, but so photographers are you know you guys can pick that up if mm -hmm. something's not feeling a little mm -hmm. right, and then you might mm -hmm. have to reshoot. Go it, with your gut. You know. Yeah. If it's. But so yeah, it gets back to you know working with professionals and knowing who you're hiring, where they're coming from, yeah. and uh, so that's another reason why we do what we do because we've had we've had all kinds of situations where we've thought about not going through agencies, but that opens you up to some a lot of pro problems potentially. Yeah. Also, um, when you go with an agency, you know they already have a contract, right? So you're not going to get any um, pushback from the model later, like changing their mind maybe they don't they can't they can't contact you and say like I don't want you to use those photographs anymore. If you go through an agency, they've ar they're they've already done that job. The job is gone and out the door. And now you have those photos forever. Those are your images. Yeah. So, do you want to change and we'll do the action yeah. concepts even without weapons, I guess. Yeah. What what? Oh. Okay. So you said you more information you can have the better. Yeah. I can create a fantasy world that will kick ass. You ask me what I want on a cover, and I go, girl, boy, sword. No, I get it. Yeah, we get it. No, there's uh, authors who are very, very uh, capable of describing everything they want, and there's authors. We've got a really nice gentleman right now who never tells us what he wants. He never tells he, he doesn't tell us anything. But we, what, what I figured out what works is um, I asked him to send us a story. So I said, write a story and send it to us so that I can understand what you're looking for and, and tell me about this world that your character is living in. So then we can understand from that point how we're going to do the photo shoot. And also it helps when it comes to the compositing. Um, so you don't, you don't have to say like, you just have to tell us what, what, is your, what does your character look like? It's a girl, it's a boy, what do they look like? And then you just tell us the story. Some people, there's many different ways that we get the shot list. However you fill in the blanks, that's up to you. If we feel it's not enough information, we'll go back to you and we'll say, you got to give us a little bit more. And if you just say, I'm a writer, I can't, we say, <laughs> then write. Then write a story for us <laughs> so that we can then understand what you're looking for. There's many ways for you to, um, to get that information to us. Uh, do you ever use, uh, like if, if I could send like other sample covers from other like big film you know yeah. in the so genre yeah so <laughs> you get a feel for what the yes the yes like, pinterest like is it. fantastic for that because you can share your board with your photographer um so you can create a board like i really love the, the way that this um this cover turned out i love how this model looks i love you know the rain and the and the effect on that, but you know that's it. But you you do have to explain what it is that you like about it because otherwise we just look at it, you know, and like okay, so you want one of those. But you have to tell us what it is that you like about it. So don't just send the pictures. You could say like this one's all about the hand movement. So when we worked with Lucinda Brandt, um, and she is historical romance, and oh, that was incredible. <laughs> they said <laughs> it's hand poses. Hand poses oil paintings, photos from fr of oil paintings and how the hand should be slightly turned, finger out, sorry, slightly turned, fingers out, like uh, two AT. And the model, it, it took a while for that, for that posing, but um, it's very, it could be very, very specific. 
So it's really helpful to the yeah. photographers and, and uh, the models. And don't don't feel like you know, this happens too. After we've done all this analysis and after we've figured this all out, everything changes after we <laughs> handed the photography <laughs> over. So you know it's a very malleable malleable situation. But it goes back to just be as prepared as possible, bring in as, as much good stuff as possible, and you're going to get a lot of good stuff in. Like in photography, we always say, garbage in, garbage out. So you know everything's about just getting the best stuff together you can. Yeah. It'll yeah. work. Yeah. Also, um, question? Uh, yeah, so I was just going to ask, do you recommend ever doing a photo shoot on, on location, or do you guys typically do the – the in-person shots in a studio, and then uh, combine that with with like forest scenes or castle scenes or whatever else. We'd love to shoot a castle scene. <laughs> on location. If, if if you would like us to go to a castle and shoot in a castle, we would love to do that. I don't know why they <laughs> <asked for> that. <laughs> Please ask us to go to a castle <laughs> in Scotland, preferably. <laughs> we fly. We fly. <laughs> Our model will fly. <laughs> Um, we, we have a studio in Manhattan and that's where we shoot out of, um, location we have not done, uh, no, right? Because the lighting is so different, you'd have no idea what the sky is going to look like that day. You don't know if it's going to rain that day. So if you get all, everything packed up and you go outside and you're going to do this shoot and it starts raining, that's, that's money down the drain. I yeah. mean, you know, if you're going to do the kind of work that we do, which is mostly fantasy and science fiction, mm -hmm. um, I mean, these monolights could go outside. In theory, you could do it. But if it's not practical because your cover doesn't require it, then why would you do it? You yeah. know, if, you need a, if you need a scene of Central Park because your character's in Central Park and it's more of a celebrity piece, well, yeah, then that would make sense. But right. for what we do normally, uh, no. We've done headshots outside. Yeah, I take that yeah, like yeah. If it's yeah. yeah, if we had a big, yeah. yeah, yeah. If it was for an author, it. for his book. That's right. Yeah. Who was it? Um, uh, and Frank also. Right, right, right. Yeah, so we do a lot <laughs> of professional headshots. <laughs> we do. We will go on location. It, 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 but if it's, yeah. like, again, whatever is practical to the project. Yeah. Um, can I just go back to the question that someone had asked about, um, it was about uh, the covers and, I think you misunderstood what I was saying is if you give us the information for four books, we shoot all four of those books, those covers that day. So you, that's how you end up with like 800 shots. If you've got four to six books, 10 books, um, you're going to get a lot of images, but we m I meant to say that you're going to pick uh, one shot for book one, one shot for book two, three, four, et cetera. And then you could also use those shots for your banners. You could use them, um, you definitely, w are if you're at three books, you're going to want to have um, a, a book, oh yeah. uh, what is it called? Box set. Box set, thank you. Um, a box set. And you want to have a different piece of art on the cover of your box set, right? Because your your uh, your audience has already purchased book one, two, and three, why do they want to have that same cover again? You have to give them something different. So that's about your branding. So you're branding yourself, right? And you have maybe a logo. So you've created a logo. Why not put the logo um, on top of that box set? Yeah. So it's like it's really thinking outside of the box. <laughs> um, so do you want to pop up here and have a little photo with Debbie? One quick photo? And then she's going to change into something else. Oh, go ahead, please. No, no, no. She's going to just take a quick picture. <laughs> go ahead, ask questions. Okay. Um, just wanted to ask on pricing. Like, so compared to like how much a shoot would be alone to getting an image like that, like what would the pricing difference be? So the question was on pricing. Um, okay, so the way we shoot, uh, we create packages you know, because we're really a branding company. The photography services that we, we have, we, we sort of bundle with our book packaging. Um, it just works out better, M mostly because the photo shoots are so expensive that if we weren't going to do the, the branding, I, I, it would just get more expensive. We'd rather make it more valuable to you because we don't actually charge the studio fee for photography. We build that into our, our, our cover branding. We the people who but the services you're paying for the photo shoot are model, any hair and makeup, any props, it's all listed out. You buy that separately, it's done. And then all the covers become all 
cart, along with paperbacks, audios, banners, whatever else you need. So that's how we try to make it affordable for indies. Um, and we hope that that works. And of course, I you know, w w with the creative briefs, we try to make it as a, if it's only a three hour shoot, we shoot for three hours. It's all budgeted, you know what's going on. Does that answer? Is that pretty good? Oh, well, okay, so, so, okay, so let's say average $800 for the model fee for the day, and then you have hair and makeup all day, that's gonna be another 900 on average because we have a very, very talented hair and makeup artist, the best in the city is actually Sasha. Wow, what a convenient situation that is. So, so those are the typical costs. It's gonna come in around 1600, maybe to 2000 on average. So for people who have book series, three, four, five books, it starts to become very economical and practical. If you have one, it really is all to the client. Like we said, we've had clients hire, you know, two models, unique models on every cover. So it's whatever you wanna do. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, somebody asked about the 3D modeling. This is Daz and photography put together. James, come so here. So the, um, <laughs> because the, okay, so the author, um, I'm not sure, how, so yeah, so the author had this okay. fantastic idea, and so we shot the model, and then we just went into Daz and modeled the metal effect. Because she turns into a cyborg. So Which book awesome. one was totally different. Two, her arm was changing. So we did her arm and Daz. And then, I'm not sure what, this was towards the end. And you can see that her legs and her whole body became metal. Yeah. Then we paint over the whole thing. And then we, yeah. But this is, this is our model. That's her face. Uh, that's her body. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Devin is changing for us. Yes. question about that process so you do the shoot how long is post-production usually for you to for your first one to come together oh. that's, your question. that's your question <laughs> it depends on how fast Sasha works <laughs> <laughs> okay if she's not in the mood to work fast that day it may not go so it varies from a day to the shoot the shoot like the how long production. is the the whole the cover creation yeah. Depends well, on. I, I would say, okay, average what? Can you make one for this? Two days. What? Two days on average of doing that. Oh, well, no, no. Finished, oh, okay, from the time you select the shot. Okay, let's say you select the shot and you brought it into, so, okay, I want the cover. I mean, from the time we initiate making it, it could be a day and a half before you get, you know, your first round. And of course, like many of our clients, you might have a couple of rounds of changes. Yeah. And. So you definitely are going to come back to us uh, several times, like um, I uh, maybe tw maybe twice. Yeah. Um, someone has said, OK, <laughs> perfect. But Which makes us uh, nervous, actually. I know. It's like something yeah. is not right. <laughs> right. Well, we'd like so to see some yeah. changes. But um, a shoot is usually one. F it's one full day. Yeah. Um, and then and then I'm just, you know, and dead then to on the, the title part, as Carol pointed out, okay. we do the same thing. Right. So with a campaign that we start, we do an initial type of exploration of the title treatment and series branding. That's a separate fee too, because we want to spend a lot of time on it. We might know, we, we kind of have a team of designers we work with. We do a lot of it ourselves, but so that's a, a, a for logo development and series titles and title treatments, we treat that as a separate, you know, we, we address that very seriously yeah. um, at once. And then once that's approved, we used we fulfill that throughout yeah. the whole series. Yeah, we usually ask the authors to take a look, like have an idea of what you want your title treatment to look like and then come to us, but show us examples. It's really important and think about it. Think about it long and hard and we can, you know, we'll send you a couple different options um, and also about your, your name placement and show, once again, show us what you like, find examples I like how this name looks here. I like w there's a drop shadow on that. Like all all these things really really make the cover pop. Mm -hmm. It's really like there's so much to think about. I'm sure <laughs> you know that. I mean, you took how how long does it take you to write your book? Anyone? Anyone? Six Hopefully months. Hopefully longer it takes us to Six, six weeks? Three. Three. Okay. Three exactly. Go. So yeah. you worked that hard, right? And that long. So think about your cover. You want people to Understand, like, grasp your story. You worked so hard on that story. You know, you want it to be represented on your cover, right? 
what you want people to, to buy that book, but they're g they're, you can judge a book by its cover. So <laughs> that, that is definitely. So Devin is back, and now we're going to do a little urban, a little urban fantasy here. Should uh, change up the lighting. Yeah, let's okay, the so um, what can we do to do that? Why don't we go to the dark? We're gonna go dark and stormy. Yeah, Always one of those. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. I'm going to bring you this microphone so you can. What's wrong with so much color? Okay. So uh, when you're changing out the gel shots, do you normally stick to like primary colors or does it depend on like the mood, depending on the genre of what you decide to use? The gels don't even come in, uh, you know, we use all kinds of colors, it's mostly the mood. So if it's like a sunset, we might load up with a lot of warm gels. Mm -hmm. um, it does two things really, it kind of knocks down the, um, it knocks down the f-stop. Mm -hmm. So you're getting um, just a little bit more mellow a shot. Mm -hmm off the bat, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, when you go into Photoshop, you can manipulate that really mm -hmm. nicely. And you can also change, like, that that bright purple you see on that rim shot, that rim light, you can adjust that. That'll change out. Okay. You know, you're not stuck with it necessarily. Okay. It, just, one more it just keys the color. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just tells us what the color okay. keys are, you know? Okay, cool. And then I have one more question. I noticed when you were taking her shots that you did a lot of slow still movements, which I love. Is that mainly because of, like, you don't have to change your... Uh, aperture or anything like that on your camera, just in general, or? Okay. Exactly, so, okay. well, no, y you gotta be careful. So when you hear those lights beep, those lights have been recharged. So we can't move faster than the recharge on the lights. And then this lens is actually, allows you to shoot at higher uh, shutter speeds. Most cameras or lenses don't have that. So you'd have to even be, you have to just be careful, you have to go slower. So Devin knows that she can't move until she hears that beep. Right. Yes. Yeah. So the model I who's um, experienced knows to hold. Look, it's, I don't know if you heard me say hold, hold. So when they have weapons, um, what happens is you're holding weapon and you, you, you want to do this, right? Because you're, you're <laughs> you can't help yourself. So when she's moving, she's in, and I say hold, 
because she's exactly where I want her to be, right? And also, when you're shooting with um, weapons, you want to make sure that, so when you're holding, uh, can you hold that like you're holding a sword? So right now, because in my mind this is a sword, <laughs> and Devin is also uh, using this as a sword, she already knows how to put her hand like this so that we can get the blade. So most people will hold it like this. How I can't, we can't work with that blade, right? Because it's just like this weird piece. So we would have to then go to find a shot in those 800 shots and take the hand off, uh, silo this all out, and then replace it, right? Put it, put it in the shot. But Devin is experienced, so she knows how to hold her hand so that we can actually see the weapon. So it's really important um, to guide your model that way, for sure. Questions? shots too. Yeah. Yeah. There's just a little delay. Um, these file sizes are about 120 megs each. So that's a ton of information. You have a question? <laughs> um, so yeah, um, I don't know if you answered this already, but why do you why do you guys shoot on medium format instead of like full frame? Uh, yeah, yeah, or, or, or that. any other format. I'm so just wondering. Here's where it matters. Um, here's where it matters. It uh, we didn't really okay. Let's say we're moving really quickly, and we, we like shadows in our shots. So when you get your cap, okay, this is a good one. So here you've got your capture. Um, it's not as crystal clear there for you as it is here for me. But there's a lot of darks in here. And you know, you might say, what am I gonna do with this? It's so dark. If this were a 35 millimeter format, you'd have a lot of breaks. You know, you'd have a lot of areas where the gradation would just, just cut off. Um, it's called, uh, what is it called, clipping. You can go white too hard, you can go black too hard, you can't go back. When you have a medium format, you got a lot of forgiveness built in. So it goes back to what we were saying earlier. You just want the best setup so, you know, there's so much information there. So all of those blue gene areas, you could, you could re you know, just reprocess this several times to get all the detail you want. If that were uh, 35 millimeter, you wouldn't have that flexibility. And then the other thing you want to do is use good capture software like Capture One here that's just really strong software. Um, let's say the magenta, you can't stand that, and it's like, why did I hire someone who used magenta gels? I'm never going to hire them again. Because they look amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, so you can also kick that out. Um, I'm not exactly sure where that is, but you definitely can do it. Um, but you can control your hue. I mean, this, this, this software uh, allows for a lot of adjusting. So yeah, so that's the reason for the medium format, um, flexibility and forgiveness. Because you know, you as a client, we want to make sure we can deliver no matter what.
pretty good. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome with an umbrella, folks. <laughs> Jeez. Only a pro can do that. Let's get the umbrella out of here. Yeah, lightning coming out. Like to see any other poses? Do you have any ideas? Thoughts? Question? Question? Is it just asking for horror poses, threatened or frightened? Great. One sec.
to get back to the question on medium format cameras versus uh, 35, um, so we're shooting full length, but we could come in on this and shoot and get just a fabulous portrait as well. And I, I, I think that flexibility is amazing. I mean, it's just a little bit of an investment, but worth it. Oh, that's fabulous. Look at that. Look how badass that is. All right. Excellent, these look great. These look amazing, right? Excellent. <laughs> these are fabulous. I mean, just even without seeing her eyes, I know she's scared. I mean, it just looks fabulous. Really great stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that rim down so you can get some different effects with a little bit of off here. Any other poses? Any, any huh. questions? When, when you're dealing with uh, talent like Devin, who obviously has a lot of experience as a book cover model, how different is that than dealing with someone that you just pick from a, a, a catalog or something who may or may not have those skills? How, how much easier is it to deal with someone like her versus kind of training as you go? With Devin, it's a breeze. <laughs> yeah. I do catalog stuff too, so I think for these guys, they'll probably also ask, you know, once once the model's picked, they'll also ask, like, what's her versatility? Has she done any book covers? Has she done anything, like, creative or kind of, you know, a little more out there? Mm -hmm. And then if the agent is like, ah, not really, just works for Chico's or, you know, <laughs> stuff like that, then yeah. then they might come back to you, I'm assuming they may come back to you and be like, well, yeah. she has a great look, but she hasn't really, you know, done any book covers or anything like really creative outside of her regular catalog. Do you then maybe leave it up to you and if you want to take the the chance or not? I don't know. I'm just saying. The model that we use for <laughs> this for this shoot, going back to this one, <laughs> um, she came in uh, and the author was very specific. She really wanted this model. She's she's beautiful um, and she's petite. But what we did to her <laughs> um, was incredible. Yeah. So you should, it's a. Uh, I can't remember her name. She was kind of tough to deal with, so we never had her back. The, mo the model. The, the model. model. She was a little the tough. She goes, I really only shoot beauty. And I was like, you're going to be so beautiful, but I'm just going to put a lot of blood on you. And she <laughs> yeah. was like, yeah. You yeah. like real blood? I was like, no, 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 it's fake blood, see? And I was like, <laughs> look, look, look. And she was like, are you going to pour it on me? And I was like, yes. <laughs> so I'm going to use a sponge, and I'm going to apply blood to you. And on your knuckles, I said, but you're going to hold this head. Um, <laughs> uh, but you get to hold a phone like you're taking a selfie with this severed head. <laughs> and she was just looked at me like, I usually do beauty. And I was like, <laughs> like I said, you're going to look really beautiful when we're done. And <laughs> by the end of that day, she was having a really good time. So we had her foot on sandbags. Later, uh, it's another head. And then she's holding a severed head. And um, she's in a tutu that has blood all over it. So it's, it's actually. <laughs> it's a true story. I mean, <laughs> that was. a true story. Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, but yeah. otherwise, you know. She it got into it after a while. I mean, we yeah. do run in these situations where we'll, we will have, uh, from an agency, somebody who's never worked on a book cover before. And it terrifies us. So we don't like to do that, but we have run into those situations. We just got to do a lot more coaching, a lot more work. He gets really quiet, and I get very chatty. So um, I try to help them. Like, I try to, like, figure out the mood. I walk out. He gets so nervous, and he's like, should we, send, should we, should we just send him back? I'm like, no, we're here. We got to work. We got to do this. Like, <laughs> we can do this. Um, and, you know, you just, we have music on. We try to, like, you know, get them relaxed in the mood and um, ask like what kind of music do you like y and then we just put it really loud and if they're alone it's it's sometimes it is difficult 
And um, sometimes if they don't know how to move, I'm like, that can be hard. I'm like, you know, eyes to camera, eyes to camera. Uh, relax the face. Like I was saying before, for the men um, and women, if we want them really, you know, uh, pumped up, we have them do push-ups. Um, but a lot of times, if they're modeling for a long time uh, in one position, we have them, you know, shake out their face a little bit because they just start, you know, tightening up if, if they're new and they're not used to doing that. Fans help. Uh, we have water effects. If we don't like the expression they're giving us, if they're supposed we to be, spray we just spray them with water. <laughs> <laughs> and we're being serious. <laughs> yeah. It works like a charm. All of a sudden, they're in character. It really does. So. And then their yep. face is loose, right? Because yeah. they were like, oh. But a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it is just to distract them from what yeah. they're doing, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, like we, uh, people like Devin, people like some of the other models, they're so in character, it blows, it blows our minds. They could be the, some of the better actors we've ever seen. But yes, another really great thing that we offer is, um, I don't know if anyone here has had their own um, cover shoot done, but we always bring the author in, whether they come um, in person or on uh, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, we always have you come in. Let's say we're shooting for like an hour, two hours, so we have something to show you. And then um, just for you to meet your model. It's really important for you to, to make that connection with them also. And, and sometimes we'll call earlier if we feel like the model's not really getting it. So we'll get the author on and then they like talk to them and they're like, hi, nice to meet you. Um, you look great. Or we want to make sure that you're also happy. So do you like the way this is looking? Do you like how the model looks? Um, do you want any other poses? So that's why we always say, anybody want to see another pose? Is there something you would like to see? Um, if you have something in your mind of how you might want your character, um, we can you know, try it out. Like, you think you want them to go like this, but maybe when you actually see it done, you're like, oh, that's not really what I'm looking for. So there's a lot of that. So it's important for, for you to share in the experience. It's very important. And it's also really exciting, right? Aren't you excited? So ha have you ever have you ever done Amish? You know, um, a model came to us, she was 16, and she said, this is really exciting because I usually do Amish covers. And we haven't, but we would be happy to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right. Uh, the models, they're, they'll, they come, and we, like I said, she was holding a severed head. Like, they'll do whatever <laughs> they're yeah. hired yeah. to do. Um, when we did Lucinda de Brandt's covers, um, there was one where she was in a very long, modest mm -hmm. dress, right? She was yeah. supposed to be, like, 16. And it was just, um, just really simple, and she did have a cap on, and it was just a long, simple dress. But they're happy to do it. Like, they really get into the character. Yeah. Um, if I did look at some Amish covers before we came here because I was like, you know, um, we're going to meet people who are looking for that, and we have to address this. I think it's really important. Um, women of color, men of color, uh, like someone asked me if we have kids. We don't because the children models are really difficult to get. They go to school. <laughs> and so it's a problem during the day. <laughs> they don't and they have to bring their parents. And, and we uh, – he – he has a daughter and I have a daughter, and on the weekends we don't shoot because we are with our families. Um, yeah. yeah, but um, you know, if let's say an Amish project did come in, yeah. we would educate ourselves to the whole thing. We get d really well briefed by the author, and do all the and research. And we would need guidance on um, getting the costumes and, and what you're looking for and how to find them. I mean, I source everything. Um, a lot of times we have customs uh, costumes custom made, so uh, that's that could be really really important. Like if there's a very specific necklace that you need, we would probably have it made. If we can't somehow figure it out, we would have it made. Um, you know. Yeah, yeah. it just adds personal it. touch. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If you have those things in your story, like um, your character has a magic ring, we want to know that because we want our model to wear the ring. Yeah. And it, it we'll just put any ring on and then we make that ring later, um, unless you have the ring, maybe you have the ring. Who has her jewelry? Uh, Haley Edwards. Haley yeah. Edwards has her jewelry made, so she just sent it. You know, she yeah. sends it and we use it. And it again, it enhances the branding of the of the series. Absolutely. So we can build on that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything specific? Any other questions? All right. We stay. We have ten minutes. Any ideas? <laughs> what shall we do? <coughs> Steve, you want to get up here and pose with Devin? Um, 
maybe some maybe some romance poses. So, uh, oh. <laughs> uh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. How are we gonna do that? Okay. Well, Devin's a professional, so she is gonna pretend like someone is with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Romance is alone, of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Very, very, very nice. <laughs> so great. Fantastic. I guess we'll, uh, any final questions? More questions? A while. <laughs> we, start, we, started, we started last week. People might think we, you know, we're too old for this. But, uh, yeah, how long, Gavin? So Devin met yeah. Jean about 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. Jean and I started working together. It's almost been five years. Yep. Five yep. glorious years. Yeah, so <laughs> us as a team, yeah, we've yeah. got a solid five. And it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's probably going on uh, closer to 15. I guess I wouldn't want to talk about that. But <laughs> it helps with the level of experience. I mean, as we were doing this, I was just thinking about all the crazy things we've been through. Um, Devin just had a baby four months ago, by the way. Okay. Devin <laughs> was uh, a two for the longest time, and <laughs> now he's a sex. I mean, I'm she she looks great in the size six. I'm and telling you, this is perfect. With her, so not the baby's baby. at home. <laughs> okay, but um, no, just incredible. Like I think every single shoot is an adventure. Yes. You always. don't walk in and and just find it a simple day. No, no, um, and we. Well, I know I love what I do. I believe he. I love it. He loves it. <laughs> um, it's amazing, and I'm and I'm always so excited to work with authors, and because their excitement excites me. And when we're in the studio working, I just I I love the energy, and I love what the authors bring because it's really exciting to bring that to life for you. It's very fulfilling. Yeah. In fact, let's say you know we were blessed with a job from like Netflix. They'd hand us all the assets. Right. Here, we actually get to create the character with you, which is the biggest honor we could ever ask for. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. That is our favorite, favorite thing to do. We love our photo shoots. I mean, yeah. we love doing this. We love the compositing, too, but that can be a little, well, the whole aspect, uh, there's stress and enjoying every <laughs> aspect, <laughs> step, right? And the compositing the is, is uh, that's when we bicker. <laughs> well, uh, a little bit. I mean, it's always like has its joy <laughs> and agony. I guess it's like. Uh, I mean, but like, I think one of the reasons why we're so thrilled when we have great talent is because we all of a sudden have s s secured this great project right. for our clients, and then yeah. the next step is okay, we got to composite and do the type, and there's all these steps. But that's the first one is getting the shot. Yeah. The shots down. And uh, something we did not mention is we do BTS. We do behind the scenes. So if, you, let's say you have a photo shoot done, um, we would have a camera going so that later on you could use that. You could use the BTS for your, um, all of your, need, like yeah, your marketing. media marketing. Um, you can put it on your website. You can say, you know, coming soon and give them a little snippet of what was happening and then, you know, the covers are gonna take a little time to do, but it's really exciting stuff. Yeah. It's We've really done You've done a very professional level interview with authors. I, I have. Um, Lucinda Brandt, um, they asked us to do an interview, and we, it was uh, quite amazing. I think mm -hmm. you can find it. Where, where is it? It's that? on our website. It's oh. on our YouTube channel. <laughs> it's on our website and our YouTube channel. Which, we've <laughs> yeah, we've got, uh, well, we've done everything. We've done book trailers. Yep. We've done <coughs> high level uh, interviews. Yep. The BTS is something we, we thought people would enjoy. Uh, it's a behind the scenes video, but yep. there have been times when we've actually been able to extract some of that footage and put it into other book trailers yep. for clients. So yep. again, it just goes back to uh, load up on the assets and yeah, the just the more you have, the more you can you know you want to market yourself. It's all about your marketing. Um, also, we do um, cover kit design. So that is. Why wow, you want to talk about that? Well, I thought we could just drop a little so hint. On, on <laughs> if you're really interested. Yeah. So <laughs> GS Stock Art and Photography has, you know, what we feel is the best stock site on the planet, and then we wanted to back it up with offering some training and a lot, and we have a live webinar every month where we go through composite mm -hmm. techniques, and we're developing a program that we think is very, very, very sophisticated for uh, compositing. Yeah. <coughs> so you can really see how it all comes together. Um, but we have two websites. So we have GM and we have GS. So the stock site, if you're not ready for, um, you know, if, you, if you're not ready to do a custom uh, photo shoot. And you feel like you want a model with a red rim light and a black tank. Yeah, you can visit our stock site later <laughs> and um, purchase that. <laughs> And the prices start at what? What are, I don't know, like eighteen, twenty-four dollars. The prices start like twenty-seven dollars <coughs> for the basic license, and then if you have an expanded need, like say in-store book sales, it goes yeah. up higher, yeah, and so forth. But yeah. so you know, feel free to check that out. We can f we have some uh, cards here, so you can just go onto the QR code, and it takes you directly to our site. So I would, uh, you, you could take both. We have GM and GS. Where's GM? Yeah, let's get GM. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, one of the reasons why we got into photography, you know, a long time ago was because we found it hard to cobble from stock. We found it very difficult and time consuming. Um, also, uh, art directors weren't real good at describing what they wanted. So we had to form a system where if they could describe what they wanted, we could actually deliver it. Mm -hmm. And so we started to focus more in the photography, and we've stayed there ever since. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely. And the indie authors are wonderful to work with. The best. Always, always the best because. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> when it's, you know, from a publisher, it's like there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different experience. And it's like one cover, one, just, just one. Yeah, they produce, what, one a year? Uh, yeah, just one. But when you have an indie author and we get to, you know, learn about you and get the background of your, you know, the world that you're building, um, it's, a, it's a shared experience. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of collaborative work. So um, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks um, for coming in. You know, check out our sites, both of them. And um, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions, if you, uh, if you want to talk about, you know, art, if you want to set up a shoot, if you have questions about our stock site. We did launch, did we launch it? Yes, yes. The pre-mates? Yes. Okay, so we have uh, 15 pre-mates that are up on our stock site yeah. right now. Get them while they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you so much.